Okay. All right. Part two here of Return of the Phantom. <laughs> If this, if it just, it doesn't loop forever, does it? I don't know. Um. Anyway, hold on one second. Let's get the get the time rolling. Let's hope. Oh, my saves are there. Okay. 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 Um, so we left off. There's a bit of a cliffhanger on the last stream. So Christine was our our girlfriend was in her room doing things with the phantom. It looks like the phantom took her behind a big mirror in her room. I forget how we even got here. I don't think we walked down. Yeah, we busted down her door with a fire axe and broke the axe, I think, too. But then we didn't even bother to to go behind that mirror. It has to be. That's where we need to go. Um, forget what we said to this guy. Monsieur Richard. Are you not going to the opera? I must run. I shall see you later, Raoul. Oh, yeah. So our girl girlfriend gets kidnapped, and we're just going to go see a... We're just going to go see an opera. I remember now. We had a, a free ticket. Right, we were gonna talk to this guy. <clears throat> talk to the ticket seller. I think we get a free ticket. May I help you, Monsieur? Give me my ticket. Um, do you have a ticket for? Do you have a ticket for Raoul de Chagny? Oui, Monsieur. Here it is. Miss Day left it just a few moments ago. Oh, was it was it Christine came back? I think that's maybe that's what it was. Like she she did things with the Phantom and we were hearing those things. And then she comes back like like uh nothing's wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. The envelope reads Raoul de Chagny. It is written in Christine's hand. So just open it. Okay, got a piece of paper and a ticket. What's on the paper? I am in danger. Please meet me backstage after the performance tonight. Okay. All right. So assuming I just head up to. Actually, where it probably says where I need to go on the ticket, right? It, yeah, okay, box nine. So it is it is up where the boxes are? A couple boxes down from box five, which is the Phantom's box seat. And the ushers block in the way there. Um. Madame Geary probably has to unlock the door. What if I give that piece of paper to her? No. 
Excuse me, monsieur. Do you have a ticket? Yes. Yes. Very good, monsieur. Box nine. I shall unlock the door. Mm-hmm. Do you think she locks us in? Enjoy the performance, monsieur. Okay. I don't know. I just want to do a real, real quick save before, because God knows what's going to happen next. Big old phantom reveal. Um, in the phantoms box, there was a, there's something going on with the column. There's like a hidden panel. I wonder if there's something going on here. Let's open the... just want to see if there's anything weird with this box. Okay. I guess we'll just enjoy the show. Just hang out in my seat. Well, the house has been cleared. The scenery has been struck. Mm -hmm. We can investigate this more thoroughly without a panic-stricken audience on our hands. Okay. One hour later. Yeah, okay. Um. They obviously went through the trap door. They obviously went through the trap door. Yes, it was no magic trick. I wonder what Jacques has to say. Why, I have not seen Jacques. Perhaps you should seek him out. And that was the guy right beneath the trap door, who was just hanging out the whole time. Has backstage been thoroughly searched? Only perfunctorily. The stage manager sent everyone home. You might want to take a look yourself. What should I do now, Monsieur Richard? I fear for Christine life that monster is capable of anything we must find her i shall go deal with the police at the station search for her raoul she loves you see what you can find backstage good luck raoul adieu adieu um all right No big hurry, Raoul. Okay, so trapdoors up there. <coughs> um uh oh he's dead. Oh wait. Boot a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit. Uh oh, his neck's broken. The Phantom has committed murder! Whoopsie. Um, well, let me take that key. Antique key of some kind. It's the skeleton key. Now, I remember there was, uh, in the last... ...stream, there was a, there was a door that mentioned it could be opened by a skeleton key. Mmm... I just forget which one. 
if it was uh, the ballerina rooms or if it maybe was this here well I'm just gonna ooh can I finally push him out of the, or push the prompter stand poor Jacques is in the way Raul can I like pull him out of the way <laughs> Jacques is not made for pulling Jacques is probably not made for pushing. Throw Jacques in the garbage can. Take Jacques. Talk to Jacques. <laughs> Jacques can't hear you. He's dead. Um. Do I go here? Do I go there? Phantom would have went down here, right? Mm -hmm. mm, I think he would have just went up, up, up. Maybe that's what I remember the skeleton key was for. It's at the very top. I don't think there's anything down here unless something's hiding in the weird pile of mannequins. Yeah, let's let's go all the way up. Oh, what was it? It was uh, the catwalk, right? That's what's up here. Looks like a good place for some battle to happen. I remember in the modern time the phantom popped out from under the tarp. Or around there. I'm almost paranoid walking over these planks here. It feels like the the game's just gonna have one of these give out at some point. There's the chandelier trap under there. I don't think there's anything back here, right? And then over here, I think was a dead end. I don't think anything else happens over here. Also not sure what I'm supposed to do with this rope with the hook. Unless I'm supposed to get to uh, an upper area. Sure is a lot of rope in this place. Well, um... I guess the phantom could have taken her under the trap door, up the circular staircase. Just that music make it makes it seem like something's gonna happen here, but, but yeah, up the circular staircase to backstage, across there, and then back to her room, where the mirror was, so he can get to his uh, secret phantom lair. I take the stool. It's a waste of my valuable time. Yeah, what was it? What do I use this key on? It could be that it's just all the doors in here. Which would be nice. Whatever happened to that creepy guy who was looking to, uh... Paint those ballerinas.
Yeah, so these should, these should both be locked. Yeah, can I unlock it? Doesn't work there. Okay. It may just be for Christine's room. Or maybe not. Maybe for nobody's room here. But I do specifically remember something uh, when I tried to open it mentioned oh a skeleton key might, might work well here. How did they repair that door so quick? I guess they must have had a spare. Okay. This is probably locked, right? Come on, baby. What? Hmm. <laughs> oh wait, really quick, I want to see if he'll say like, oh, I can't believe they repaired my, my battle damage door so quick. You marvel at the speed with which the theater carpenters replaced Christine's door. Okay, well, nothing to do here. Um, we can fool around a bit more backstage. Maybe there was something left at the uh, in the stage manager's area. Ah, I wish I remembered what door. Mention the skeleton key. I uh, yeah, I don't see anything over here. Oh, what was it? Um, I thought the prop table had something like a locked drawer or something. It says it's stored there, right? But I can't open it. Yeah. Well, let's check out well, what's on stage. Just making noise. <laughs> yeah, and if you... If you jump into the orchestra pit, as we found out, you'll break your leg. But the game starts you right back up on stage. Even if you didn't save there. How nice. Well, let's look at the post again. Well, hmm. I wonder if he, if he is just hiding down there in the um, the area with the mannequins. Hold on, let me uh, let me pop back up on stage. I'll I'll just go down through the trap door. Yeah, so... I 
phantom pop down. Did his little poofy magic trick. Went down through the trap door. Obviously didn't go out that way through the pit. Went this way. Yeah, if he went back up, someone would have probably spotted him backstage. Vive la France! Push that thunder machine. Pull that thunder machine. Um... I'm just peeking. Walk the stair unit props. Um. Yeah, got to be something down here, right? Might as well just try opening stuff. In the present day, I tried to open the mummy prop, but it's just for scenic enhancement. Yeah, the mannequin's not having an orgy. Still, maybe pull the mannequins. Open the mannequin. Push the mannequin. Throw the mannequin at the staircase. And I guess there's not a... Another area over there. What did Christine's notice say again? I am in danger. Please meet me backstage after the performance tonight. Am I just supposed to go backstage? Is there something there? So I didn't see anything that popped out. Only thing that really pops out here is this weird egg prop. Or whatever it is. I don't see anything down here. I think the only thing that was down here was one of those um, red, yellow, or blue frame things that we picked up. Which obvious, obviously used for some kind of light puzzle. And here it takes us up to the catwalk. I don't... Is there anything back here? Because remember, some of these screens will open up like a, a wider area if you hit the edge here. No? Jeez, I wonder if I should just talk to... Uh, Hmm. Madam Geary. Go check out the Phantoms uh, Box 5, see what's going on in there. Maybe that'll trigger something to happen, because I think I've already... I think I've already explored this. Um, about as well, I've, well as I could. Um, probably alert them that Jacques's dead. So we got a dead guy in our hands. Because uh, before when we got stuck, we, we checked out box five. Found the phantom's little trap door. Oh, that's what it was, right? That's what it was. Uh, in box five, there was that trap door and it said it could only be opened by a skeleton key. There we go. We're remembering. Okay. Okay. Well, let's uh, talk to that 
First, we'll go in the library over here. Then we'll talk to uh, uh, Richard. Richard. Uh, tell him about the dead guy. Then we'll head upstairs out to the box. There's nothing in here that I can see. Hey, you've got a... Oh! You're not in here. I wonder if I can steal your stuff. You wonder if even Charles de Gaulle had a desk this exquisite. It certainly is large. Open the desk. From the other side. What do you mean it doesn't open? What? When? Open comfy chair. Open the manager's chair. Well, he's gone doing something. Okay, well. We know where to go. I'm uh, gonna go to box five. I'm not sure if Madam Gary's gonna be there. No? Well, better be open. Okay. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. We're gonna do a little game saving. Gonna unlock the panel. Yes. Here we go. You feel somewhat claustrophobic as you find yourself enclosed in a narrow passageway. So this is how the phantom gets around. You're amazed by the ingenuity of the hollow column. It apparently provides access to three levels. Phantom is very clever indeed. Oh, so here I am. This probably takes us to the catwalk. This takes us, I don't know, basement. Let's head up here, see where we pop out. It says it's locked. And the skeleton key doesn't seem to fit. Well, that makes it easy. Should be able to go down below then. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Look at the lake. The vast underground lake looks murky and cold. It smells too. You realize it must be part of the Paris sewage system. Ugh. Phantom smells like poop. Alright, looking around, you're deep beneath the theater on the edge of the catacombs. A vast underground lake stretches before you. It's dark, damp, and cold. Echoing sounds of dripping water and scurrying rodents give you the shivers. Okay. Don't look like there's anywhere I can go, except for here. This creepy skull. It's too dark in there. Well, it's a good thing we have this lantern. Spooky. We haven't died yet. I wonder. I'm not sure if it's one of those games you can actually die. Uh oh. So when I. When it has you choose the difficulty level, easy or hard, or whatever it's called. Uh, we chose uh, challenging, hard mode. And I looked up online just briefly to see what that affected. I think this is what it affects. I'm hoping the lantern doesn't run out of juice. Uh, if, if this is not time-based, it, it shouldn't be too bad. So let's see here. Actually, you know what? Let me. This looks like a deal I'll need to uh, keep track of. Maybe where I am. Okay. Archway to the north. Let's 
blocked. Can't go down. Can't go down. Is there anything with this exposed brick? Doesn't look like it. What about the grate? Ah, oh, good. A oh, hold on him. Just keeping notes, keeping notes. Um, archway to north. I don't even know where I'm... Oh, man. Ooh, what's this? nest and a skull alas poor York you knew him well but you really don't want to carry this around Look at the rat's nest open the rat's nest Um, it seems like there's something you should, maybe there was something supposed to be in there. My map, my, my little homemade map's going to get messed up. I, I don't even know what happened there. <laughs> I hate when maps do that. When it, I went through the north and put me down here, this looks like the entrance that I was at. I want to go back here see if it was. There's a blocked archway. Exit to more catacombs. Alright, to test if this thing loops. If I go down. And then I go here. This was supposed to be the entrance, if I'm right. Okay, it did loop. Weird. And was there, hold on, was there anything to exit to more catacombs? Jeez. I should have had just a big old piece of grid paper for this. What I expect to find in here is there's going to be some kind of exit. But there's probably some kind of key item that I need in the catacombs. And if I exit before I get that um, big whoopsie Yeah. I should have made my little boxes smaller when making the map. Oh man. 
Oh, no, it... This isn't the... It... Is it looping here? I think it's... It's just doing one of these. Hold on, is this the... Is this gonna take us out? Man, this is confusing. So it's not... There's some kind of like magic stuff going on here in this maze. Okay, um... Because you'll go in some of these entrances and that... Like, we shouldn't have ended up here. Okay, we didn't go this way. Oh, what the? I mean, I remember this. The exposed brick, too, is so weird. It feels like... Maybe you should have... What happened here? Hold on. What is... Skull and rat's nest? I am... I am confused on where I am. Blocked archway. It's the finest specimen of a blocked archway you've seen all day. What about this one? Your old criminology instructor would be very pleased at your attention to detail, but even the blocked archway is pretty insignificant. So, <laughs> looking at my map, it's... I have zero clue where I am. I'm at a gate. Can't open it, right? It's been cemented shut for decades, maybe centuries. What, rope with a hook? Hey, I don't think there's anything up here, right? Oh, what's... Is there something down here? Thought there was. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I... I just lost track of where I was. Here, so that... We're going off map here. We're going off map. It may be that we need to use this uh, grapple hook at some point in here, maybe to pass one of these archways, but I'm not sure. Going off script. It happens too much when I try to make these maps. It's like, oh yeah. Just gonna plot out everything. Life's gonna be good. And then something weird happens. I lose track of where I am. And then just scramble around. What is this? Exposed brick. If I push it. Was it made for pulling? I think there's anything else really other than this rope with a hook that I could be using in here. How many hours do you think I'll be stuck in here? It's 
So I think this led us here to some kind of just a bunch of dead ends. Is this the entrance then? Ugh. This must be, right? If this is the entrance and I have it, an idea... Where to go? So we're gonna go over one and then up one. Looks like we haven't explored that yet. I don't think we've explored down either. Okay, we'll go down one. Plank. Can I take the plank? A splinter is probably useless. Um, here we've been before, unless it's it doesn't line up with the map. God, that looks so much like another room that we've seen here. Only it was way in the northwest. Oh, I think it's looping. Oh. This would probably take us to another room with a blocked archway. No? God, it's so confusing. Well, I mean, I did... I did pick challenging. Just try to go east as far as we can. But I don't know. It's so tough to choose with all these different directions you can go. I feel like we just were here. I mean, they're reusing. A lot of these maps in different areas. Like we were like this. We've seen this before. I wonder if the catacombs are supposed to be endless. I think we were on the other side of this at one point, right? Maybe this is uh, on the right track. Oh, <laughs> well, this is the other side of it. What's going on here? Oh man, more catacombs. Just keep going east. Um, so I go east and then I pop out from the south somewhere. This looks like a repeating area. Okay, go north. And then I come out. Am I gonna come back through the north area? So weird. Oh, and now I'm at a gate. I don't think there was anything we were supposed to pick up that allows us to get past a gate. Hmm. Just 
kind of backtracking a bit. Um, yeah, go through the west, and now we're coming up through the the south. See, I'm not sure if if we're always if this is always north, this is always south, or what's going on here. be nice if we had a little compass down here tell us which way we were facing uh, maybe just go out through the archway here go out here just see if we can work our way back to the to the start of this Oh, can you imagine if there was a time limit on that lantern? It looks like I'm looping, so I'll go down one more. Wait, see now I'm popping out here. This is the only way. Use stinky poop water. I mean, imagine being trapped in a maze. It just smells like poop. And it's cold and you're tired. Someone kidnapped your girlfriend. Ugh. I'm hoping there's not some small detail that I should be catching here. Like with the plank or whatever on the floor or these exposed bricks. And the wall. Exit to more catacombs. Exit to more catacombs. Hmm. Guessing it's looping. Okay, now we're going to try it again. <laughs> okay. Um. I am going to get... A bigger piece of paper and we're gonna map this thing out for real Okay, so I'm just going to start out from the, from the center here. Now there's four ways we can go, including back to the entrance. Which way to the north? This is two passageways. We'll try to the east. And we'll go 
down and see if see if this is doing some weird loop thing. This should take us back to the initial room. This should take us outside of the catacombs. Okay. down and that gives us two areas. It says archway to the east exit to more catacombs. I wonder what the difference is between that because it seems like exit to more catacombs is the one where it may take us some, somewhere weird where it doesn't Like if it takes us from like exit A to the entrance A here. Because if I go up here. That should take us out of the catacombs according to the map. It should take us out the bottom. But it didn't. So maybe I'll just call that. A. Okay, art. These are all archways. Wait, hold on. Next to more catacomb. Archway, archway. Where the hell does this take us? I don't know, so I'm going back up. This is horse shit. Because <sighs> this says X more catacombs, but it's just really the archway to the south, right? way to the north and then that just says more catacombs Okay, head north. More catacombs. Rat's nest.
Man, I don't even know if I can do this on paper. Because of how this thing's structured. Especially in cases where it loops the exact same room over and over again. Because what it looks like on paper is like the rooms are overlapping. Did I just... Why would you do that? Why would you do any of this where you go south and then you come out the west? Like, so like, this was the south. Am I, is this south over here? What? Wait, hold on. Is it gonna let me grapple? Get out of here. Yeah, I think what it is, is it's, it's not some... Some thing that is just, it's one big connected map. I think it's multiple separate maps in here like I'm just gonna look it up like I ain't dealing with this shit this is this is the worst I need to see what what this map looks like Oh my god. There's two mazes. There's it, it, I'm just scrolling through real quick, quick. There's Ugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, um, yeah, here, here's what I'm looking, because I, when I look up these walkthroughs, I'm not looking at the whole thing, I'm, I'm scrolling down just to what I need, this is something that, really, I could waste two hours probably trying to figure out, here's what it says the, uh, I have to do, from the lake, I have to go east, north, east, north twice, east four times, west twice, north twice, west, north, west, north, east twice, south, east four times, and then north for the first maze. Hey, get out of here, man. Get out of here. Oh my god, it's doing the... It's doing the weird cursor thing. Hold on. Did I fix it? Okay. Whatever. Like I always say, I give it my best shot, but I mean... I'm not looking to spend the rest of my afternoon here in the catacombs. There should have been... hints or something. Like, oh, you can you know, see scuff marks on the floor where it was where a lot of foot tra traffic happens. Um, so we'll just fart around here until we get back to the lake. Actually, 
I think I'm pretty close to the lake. I could just load, but... Where's the fun in that? Anyway, I won't use the walkthrough, hopefully, for a puzzle that's coming up uh, past the maze here. I mean, how would how easy would it have been for them to just put in little hints at where I need to go? Where I can actually feel like I'm doing detective work. And if they would have put in something where I could have mapped it out, I would have. But, you know, if you're going to do weird stuff where you're having me go in different directions after I'm going through these archways and having my map overlap itself. It's like, hmm, I don't think so, Scooter. Like, here I'm going through the west, and what am I coming out through the north? Yeah, that doesn't need to happen. And I'm coming out here. I'm gonna, am I going to come out to the left or right of the screen? feel like I'm getting close. Getting close to the entrance here. Come on. Maybe it's down here? I think it was, actually. I think this is the exit. Okay. So... Head right from the lake. Then we're going to go east. Just so we can see how, what kind of BS this is. North. East. North. Alright, then east four times. One, two, three, four. How does this make sense? It says east four times, then west twice. This will probably put me out through the north, isn't it? Oh, it's from the south. Yeah, trash. West twice. What? Okay. Something new. Oh my god, something new. Imagine if you didn't have a walkthrough back in the day. You'd be like, oh my god. Oh my god, I found something. Oh my god. Of course, the game would probably crash right after that, because that's how life works. Okay, west twice, then north twice. West. North and then west north. 
I should have known every time it offers me one of these novice or uh, challenging options I should just always choose novice because the challenging is just it's this kind of crap it's not that it's challenging it's it's just frustrating there's no challenge to it it's just walking around wasting a bunch of time and there's nothing in the game that you can really do to to figure out where you need to go the only challenge is which walkthrough I'm gonna use to get through it All right, east four times then north Yeah, so it pops me out through the bottom there. Ugh. What? I'm up there now. Ugh, thank God. Um, can I take your sword? Excellent. This is an antique sword, probably dating back to the early 1800s. This unfortunate fellow appears to have gotten lost some time ago. He's wearing clothes a few decades out of date. Take him. Okay. Uh, I assume I can't just go through the door? Okay. Switch panel. <laughs> what is this? alphabet right oh look at that is that a real hand wait hold on I want to push it I mean hold on I mean I want to put it back where it was boop pull The panel's made up of 26 little toggle switches with skulls on the tips. Yeah, so I remember it was... I don't know if we still have the note, but it was mentioned this is the alphabet. It's made of small bone. Skulls carved from ivory. Can I escape this to reset it? I wonder if I just spell out phantom. Man, I have to remember what the. Um, you even have to do it in order? A, B, C, D. P. H A M What? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Nerve gas! <laughs> um, 
when you when you die a game over, the game does reset the screen, which is nice. Um, I wonder if I can if there's like something carved on this sword. No. Well, let's read these notices. Maybe I guess. My payment of twenty thousand francs shall be due the first of every no. month. Please give it to Madame Geary for placement in box. Miss Christine Day shall sing the lead in the wedding of Isabel. Not that toad, Carlotta. Please honor this request, or the tragedy that follows will be on your hands. What happens if I turn off the lantern? Won't let me do it. My oh. dear. Leave Miss Day alone, or you will suffer a great malady. I am in danger. Please meet me backstage after the performance tonight. Maybe just unlock the door. Doesn't work. Um... Sure, yeah, a bunch of toggle switches. Five? Five. There was also something that was mentioned. It was, um... What was it? Like, his, his favorite music? It was like, something Bach. What about if it's his, just his real name, which is Eric? Did that... Did it make a noise before? I don't think it did. I think... So... E-R-I-K I think we're doing it. Huh? Hey, look at that. I figured it out on my own. Second try. Cut down these cobwebs. I wonder if it's just a big spider gets you if you try to walk through the cobwebs. Oh no. Yep, yeah, fool me once with this trash. Um, let me... I'm just using the walkthrough for these maze parts. Oh my god! Uh, head north. Yeah, the maze, maze is just too... Eh. It's trash. It... Doesn't need to be in the game. It... Okay, so one... Three, then north, then east. Yeah, they, they should have just made the maze something like, oh, you can see, um, yeah, just like scuff marks or like little things left behind that you can follow that take you to uh, a good handful of puzzles. Because, like, the last puzzle was fine. But yeah, this doesn't add anything to the game.
Okay. I'm scared. So I... Um... Get the can I get the torch? Permanently attached. Um I feel like he's in there and he's trying to trick me into going through here. Is this a room of death? Slide puzzle. Oh. Apart from the uneasiness you feel in this strange room, you begin to feel the floor getting warm. A time to slide puzzle. Oh no. Okay, so probably gotta get it to look like the Phantom's mask. Maybe? I'm just thinking that because the some eyeballs here. I'm not sure what these would be though. My almost looks like piano keys. Oh jeez. Oh what? What's? Oh they're like they are piano keys. Oh. Wait, hold on. Please just make it something he's like this. What? Hold on. Okay. Wait. Hold on. No, it was it was the way I... there. Hold on, it, no, it just said something about getting hot. I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, 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 you did it. A trap door opens in the ceiling, blowing in a current of cold air. Oh, sweet, sweet oxygen. Now, you wonder how you're gonna get up there with our... Imagine if you didn't have the rope with the hook. And imagine making a life-size slide puzzle like that. Just... Ah, sweet phantom throw. I'm in his lair. Aha! <laughs> it is I, Raul. It is I, Raul. Turn at any moment. Um, I bet I gotta play something here on the. Do you know how to open the door? I know what I gotta do. We read about uh, how he liked the Bach, whatever. I bet we gotta play something here on the. Roll, don't leave me here, please. The lock is somehow activated musically. Mm uh hmm. -huh. Okay. I'm hoping. I'm hoping he left left uh, the score right there. Well, we know uh, he likes that killer mustard gas when we screw up these puzzles, so. Um, covered in musical notes. Um, okay. Uh, hold on, I, I gotta sit in the large chair here. Ah, wait. You get this distinct feeling that someone's watching you. From these little eyeballs. Cool chair. Okay. Please. You see four pieces of sheet music on top of the organ. Since you took piano lessons as, as a child, you can just barely sight read the music. Which piece do you wish to attempt? Oh no, what was it? I think it was... I think it was... Mmm. 
It wasn't the Takata and Fugue. That's the that's the like the only Bach thing that comes to mind. But I think it was this one. I think it was a little Fugue in G minor. Oh Jesus! <laughs> it was not that. Imagine if you were the Phantom, though, and you're just kind of going, you know, I'll, uh, I'll maybe play something new today. But you forgot about your, uh, organ trap. It must have been this thing, Canon of the Minor Sixth. There we go, that's nice. Stop playing! Get your girl. Quit farting around. What is this? Oh, help me, I'm in here. In his weird, weird pod. What are you doing? Is that like, is that full, full of blood? Christine? My lord, Christine, what is this? Some kind of coffin? I'll find a way to get you out. Don't worry, darling. Ew. Okay, well this seems like a, a room of death. Well, let's look around. This is his bedroom? The Phantom's bedroom continues the bizarre, surreal decor of the previous room. The room is dominated by a large sarcophagus and an unearthly totem pole. You wouldn't want to sleep in here. Not in a million years. Large sarcophagus, which I guess this is, and an unearthly totem pole. Look at totem. Jeez. The totem pole for lack of a better description, is completely incomprehensible to you. What kind of madman would erect such a hideous artifact in his own bedroom? What does it mean? And that heart in the middle? It can't be real. Yet, it appears as if it is filled with blood. You feel the bile begin to rise in your throat until you manage to force yourself to calm down. Yes, you think. You're truly dealing with a madman. I like just open open totem can I push it um walk walk to skull look to skull the profusion of human skulls around this place gives you the creeps I guess just try to open open the lid right Open, Christine. It's locked at the sarcophagus. Oh, open skull face. You attempt to open the skull face. Look at the skull face. The front of the sarcophagus consists of a huge skull face. As you peer into the orifices, you notice a keyhole inside the nose. Okay. Hey, look at that. Guess you shouldn't have dropped your key. You realize that the sarcophagus is open mechanically. You need to find the device which operates the hydraulic lid. In the sarcophagus. Is it this then? Don't I still have, I still got that sword? If I attack the totem with the sword. Okay, the large sarcophagus is obviously the phantom's bed. It's lined inside with the red velvet. Beneath the transparent lid, you can see Christine. 
terrified but unharmed. Walk to... There's something over here. What if there's more of the room? There's this desk. Open the curtain. Where is he? He's farting around in here. Throw the sword at the totem. Um... It's open hydraulically. Oh, is it these poles then? Uh, the pole is part of some hydraulic lift for the lid of the sarcophagus. What if I... What if I just attack the pole with the sword? Oh, come on. Really? Um... Open the pole. Push pull. Pull pull. Mm, just talk to the pole. Wouldn't she have... Let's see, talk to her. You mutter a few encouraging words to Christine, but she's too frightened to reply. You must find a way to get her out. I'm trying to look for just like any tiny something. This totem is just one big piece. Close totem. I wonder if... Let me... Let me just get out of here. Because I don't know if there was a something over there here. Okay. Probably my death. Locked tight. Skeleton key doesn't work there. If I just sit in the chair. Okay, someone's watching me. I don't know if I'm supposed to just do something from here. Also not sure if this is going to be one of those deals where it's kind of time-based. Yeah, we've got like 5-10 minutes. And then the, the phantom's going to come by and kill me. I can't go anywhere over here. Can't move the curtain. There's obviously something weird with this totem pole. Wait, hold on. I didn't realize the right click changes to look. Well, that took me four and a half hours to figure out. Okay. So what does this say? Yeah. Read that before. It says, look at the skull. Look at the sarcophagus. With the skull face. What if I just like push the skull face? How would I open this thing? Look at the pole. Hydraulic lift. Almost like like this would be some kind of control panel here, but there's no panel. Okay, the desk looks like dried skin covering human bones. It's empty and bare at the moment. Look at the curtain. Curtain covers a phantom's toilet area. You take a quick peek and see a surprisingly sanitary facility. The monster is a bit human after all. So the phantom's pooper. The floor here is textured and has ridges, almost as if you were walking across a sea of bones.
Is this what I need to be working with? Push, push, push everything I can. Oh! Wait. Okay. Now, which one incinerates my girlfriend? No. Christine! What's happened to you? What has he done? What has happened to you? What has he done? It is all clear to me now. The angel of music was Eric, the opera ghost. He spoke to me through my dressing room mirror. Earlier today, he, he must have somehow put me in a trance. I followed him through the mirror to this place. I knew that mirror was a fake. You are right. It opens, but only he can do it. There is a secret passage from my dressing room down to the catacombs. He assured me that no one can open it but him. Mm-hmm. What happened after you followed him here? He placed me on a boat and he rowed here. At first, he was unusually kind, almost vulnerable. He played some of his opera for me. He professed his love for me. No! And then what happened? No! And then what? He gave me this ring. He declared that I was now his bride. Here, you take it. I don't want it. Okay. Small, solid gold band. It was shortly after this that I was able to unmask him. What did he look like? He is death personified. The poor, wretched creature has the face of a corpse. It... It is horrible. How did you unmask him? He was playing the organ. I slowly crept behind him and grabbed it. It made him furious. I thought he was going to kill me. But he didn't hurt you? No. He became like a pathetic little child. He cried that now I would never love him. So I tricked him. How did you trick him? I told him I would love him, because he was so kind to have taught me his music. It was because of him that I am singing the lead in the opera. I begged him to let me return to perform in my leading debut. I promised to return here after the performance. But apparently it didn't work. Eric must have known you and I were going to meet after the opera, so he abducted me from the stage. How did he put you in a trance? It was with music. His voice. A violin. I was convinced he was the angel of music sent by my father. He has powers of suggestion that are impossible to resist. Mm -hmm. Where is the phantom now? He said he was going to get us some food. He should be back any minute. We must make haste. If he finds you here, he will surely kill you. What kind of food do you think they got down there in the sewer? No time to talk, love. Let's run. You are right. Make haste. I shall follow you. I'm gonna make a save is what I'm gonna make. Okay. Mmm. Escorts. Well, let's see if that left door opened. Somehow. Uh oh. Music changing. Bro, it's him! Stab him! You! How dare you trespass here! Wait. I demand that you let us go. Christine is my bride forever. She can never leave. As for you, I shall send you to your maker. Uh, uh, oh, what am I? He's casting fireballs. Get him. K 
casually walk over there and stab him. <laughs> what? He's probably gonna. What? What happened to him? Who cares? Let's run. Who cares? Let's run. I couldn't agree more. Take the score from the organ. It may be useful. For what? What are you talking about? This score is a thick stack of staff paper, with musical notes written all over the pages. At the top is it titled Don Juan Triumphant. Or am I supposed to read it? Is there some uh, secret crap on it? There's something standing out here like a pole. Not exactly running for your lives. Nah, just the same description. It's an oar. Is a boat through here? Yeah, for steering a boat or a gondola. So I'm guessing that wasn't the final battle, right? Also, we gotta get back to the modern times somehow. Okay. Let's take a nice little trip here through the sewers. Romantic, uh, poop gondola. Are we gonna battle on the boat? I never told you why I wanted to meet, wanted you to meet me after the opera. I knew Eric would come for me eventually. So I thought we should run away together, far away. Christine, there's something about me you don't know. Shh, darling. Never mind. Let's not talk now. I'm from the future! You gotta believe me. The silence here is comforting. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, should I talk to her first? No, shouldn't we get out of here? Please, I'm frightened. Let's go. I won't feel safe until we're out of Paris. Okay. What about the upper level? I wonder if that's open now. That's locked. We're free! Uh oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm not dead. What? Oh, okay. So this, it must take me up to the catwalk then for the real final battle, right? Okay, well, I got, I got an ore. I got a sword. 
Here the grid is actually the ceiling over the auditorium. You know that maintenance workers walk out onto the ceiling, but you're not about to do that. Oh, are we going to fight on the chandelier like I was thinking? Huh? Is he down here? You notice the cable's a bit frayed. Might not withstand too much strain, but you throw caution to the wind and proceed. Christine is in the hands of that madman. Yes, I knew it. Casting a lightning bolt on me. Prepare to die, Phantom. Why come with the ore? Oh, this is my sword. There's Christine slinking away as I'm being murdered. Oh wait, a real dude with a fake mustache. Wait, what am I? Push cane. Is it going to show him now? A real dude! <laughs> Ew! Look at that makeup! You fool! Now we'll both die! Oh, is this what takes us back to the current time? Were we the ones that caused... The modern day chandelier to fall? Raoul? Monsieur Montfort! Oh, look! Monsieur Brie, his eyes are opening! Dieu merci! Thank goodness! Raoul, are you alright? <laughs> what year is this? Oh. Uh... What year is this? What year? This is worse than I thought. Why, it's 1993! Just as it was when you fell from the catwalk. Where am I? You are in the Opera Library. You've had a bad fall, Monsieur Montan. Who are you? Why, I am Christine Florent. We met earlier, don't you remember? You poor man. Perhaps we should call the doctor. Go away. Go away and let me sleep. We will. But first, we must make sure you are all right. Christine Florent? I thought you were dead! Oh yeah, I thought... I think she was uh, supposed to be murdered in her room. What? No, monsieur, my body is quite warm and alive. I'm afraid you really must see the doctor. You must be Christine Day reincarnated. Or something. Christine Day? Wasn't she... She was the Phantom of the Opera's Object of Desire. A singer with the opera. A hundred years ago. You must rest, Raoul. Why don't I go and fetch the doctor? Please do, Christine. Yeah. Take care. I'll be back. I didn't fall from the catwalk. The Phantom pushed me. The Phantom, eh? My dear boy, we haven't had a phantom here in over a hundred years. I think your reading that book has put too many images in your head. Well, who caused the chandelier tragedy? What chandelier tragedy? What? The chandelier fell on the audience earlier tonight. <laughs> My dear boy, that bump on the head really has done a number on you. The chandelier is hanging from the ceiling where it has always hung for a hundred years. You haven't had any notes from the Phantom? Notes? No, I have no notes from any Phantom. You are imagining things, Raoul. Why don't you rest until the doctor comes? Oh, here's the, uh, those artifacts that 
were missing. But he was here! I have his mask and... Wait, where are they? Yeah, the mask and the... That must be the musical score. My dear Raoul, you are mistaken. Those items have been locked in that glass case for a century. Look! You glance over at the glass case and see it, that it is whole. Inside you see the phantom's mask, a small golden wedding ring, and the stack of sheet music titled Don Juan Triumphant. Go away and leave me alone. Very well, you rest. Christine will be back with the doctor soon. Okay. You are perplexed. Was it a dream? It couldn't have been. It was too real. Wait, what about Madame Geary's book? You decide to check on what the book says about the Phantom's demise. You quickly turn to the last paragraph, which reads, Eric, the Phantom of the Opera, met his death, along with the brave Raoul de Chagny, in 1881, when the chandelier upon which the two men were fighting f fell from the ceiling. Monsieur de Chagny was given a hero's burial, while the Phantom was buried in an unmarked pauper's grave. But the artifacts were kept in the opera library for safekeeping. I do believe that the world has heard the last of Eric, the Phantom of the Opera. The ending has changed. You quickly thumb through the book once again to make sure. What kind of trick have the forces of destiny played on you? You realize now that somehow you somehow managed to save the life of not only Christine Day, but Christine Florent. And as for the Phantom, he is gone forever. Oh boy! <laughs> or is he? <laughs> There's no such thing as chance, and what to us seems merest accident springs from the deepest source of destiny, Johann Christoph Friedrich von Schiller. 1759 to 1805. You've achieved a score of 250 out of 250 possible points. This gives you the rank of director. Is it even possible to get less than 250? Okay. Let's let this wrap up, I guess. See if there's anything after the credits. Hmm. Well, I don't know. I, I thought that was, uh, minus the maze. I, I thought that was pretty alright. Pretty short point and click. Not bad voice acting. Oh, I, what ever happened to that pervy guy who was, uh, looking, looking for the ballerinas? I guess we'll never... Never get to the bottom of it. No credits for the Phantom? He 
got his stunt double. I'm guessing this is a CD-ROM version. Yeah. I mean, it seems like they have voice acting for at least half of the text in the game. The assurance team, hmm. How'd they make it through the maze? marketing team because I've never heard of this before before I just started scrounging around on GOG for point and clicks it'll say and you at the end mm. it's so satisfying when they thank the player Sid Meier Edgar Degas, who was a real painter and who may or may not have been a lecherous old man. But you know, he did paint all those pictures of young ballerinas. Mm hmm. Closed caption for the sound card impaired. Is that it then? Back to the title. Nothing new. <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't think it gives anything new, but we can. Okay, yeah, any other crap? No, nothing. All right. Let's um. Just under. Under five hours of that before before I sign off, we had this, right? This was the uh, the I guess this is supposed to be the book that we pulled off the the bookshelf in the beginning, and this was must have been included along with the game. Anyway, let's see here. Um, so I write this narrative from my, oh, so it's Eric, the fan, Phantom of the Opera. I write this narrative from my home in Paris. The date is January 1st, 1902. I'm writing to clear up the many rumors and inaccuracies surrounding Eric, the Opera Ghost, otherwise known as the Phantom of the Opera. I knew Eric, you see. I was a box keeper at the Paris Opera House for nearly 15 years. It was during my tenure there that Eric was at large. I had the pleasure of tending his personal box, and I must say, I found him to be generous and kind in any dealings we had with one another. Although I never met him face to face, I felt as if I knew him as well as anyone. Some say he's a murderer and a monster. 
A tragic chandelier mishap in 1881 was attributed to him. Many people died or were injured in that unfortunate occurrence. At least three other opera personnel were murdered backstage, and these deaths were attributed to Eric as well. But no one has proved this. It is all speculation. In my heart of hearts, I believe that Eric was a victim of his own wretched existence. Any violence he may have unleashed upon society was the result of what society had done to him. He was, after all, a man with human feelings, and these feelings were corrupt from the day he was born. Eric was born the son of a master mason who lived in a small town not far from Rowan. They say that the first gift bestowed upon the child was a mask to hide his hideously deformed face. The sight of her own son was so horrified. Uh, this, the sight of her own son so horrified his mother that she refused to nurse him. Because of the lack of love and, and understanding in his home, Eric ran away at a very early age. He joined a traveling fair where showmen exhibited him as a living corpse. He made a living in this humiliating fashion, crossing the whole of Europe, cavorting with these vagabonds. Eric completed a macabre education as an artist and magician, mostly at the hands of gypsies. By the time he appeared at the fair of Nizhny Novgorod, Eric had gained a reputation as the singing freak. Already his voice was such that no other, uh, no other sounded like his. It was, quite simply, hypnotic. That was the only time I saw Eric in person. I was 16 years old. At first I too felt repulsed by the ugliness of the boy standing in front of me, but when he opened his mouth and began to sing, I was mesmerized. As Eric grew older, his talent for ventriloquism and displays of le legerdemain grew to be so extraordinary that the caravans returning to Asia spoke of them for the entire journey. Even as a young man, Eric had a reputation reaching as far as the palace of Mazenderan, a sultana, the favorite of the uh, Shainsha, was dreadfully bored and needed something from which, something with which to amuse herself. A fur dealer returning from Europe told her of the amazing feats he had seen in Eric's tent. Intrigued, the sultana ordered her Daroga to go and find the youth. The Sultana's men seized Eric, brought him to Persia, and put him in the service of the Sultana. Because of the antisocial upbringing to which he was accustomed, the lad did not know the difference between right and wrong, or if he did, he did not seem to care. For he engaged in a number of horrific enterprises on the Sultana's behalf, including political assassination, torture of prisoners, and other atrocities. Naturally, the Shah quickly took a liking to him. Not long after his arrival in Persia, Eric turned his attention to the architecture, to architecture and designed an unusual palace for the Shah. The new building would contain all sorts of trickery and diabolical puzzles. The Shah liked the idea and ordered it built. The project was a success, and the Shah was so pleased with the marvelous palace that he became possessive and protective of it. He worried that Eric might be bought and persuaded to build a similar palace of its kind for another sovereign. He therefore ordered that Eric be put to death. The Daroga who initially brought Eric to Persia had become something of a friend, for Eric had done simple favors for him. Together they conspired to fool the Shah. They happened to find a badly decomposed corpse on the shore of the Caspian Sea, and the Daroga dressed it in Eric's clothes. The Shah and his men took the corpse for Eric's body while Eric made his escape to Asia Minor and Constantinople. And this is just uh, 11 pages long, so. Should be pretty quick. Eric, now in his 20s, presented his credentials to the Sultan in Constantinople and was immediately rewarded with employment. There, Eric perpetrated perpetuated his knack for building trapdoors and secret chambers. The sort found at Yildiz Kiosk after the last Turkish revolution. 
He also created a horde of autom automata resembling the Sultan, which he used to convince people that the leader was awake at one location, when in reality he was asleep elsewhere. Ultimately, Eric had to leave the Sultan's service for the same reason he had be been forced out of Persia. He knew too much. He made his way back to France, weary of his exciting but reprehensible life. He longed to be normal. He became a contractor and designed ordinary structures for a while, until he became aware of the massive project about to be undertaken by Charles Garnier. The building of the Paris Opera Hop Paris Opera House. He tendered for the job designing part of the foundations and was accepted, but once he was alone in the cavernous cellars of the playhouse, his diabolical nature took over. He imagined a dwelling hidden within the catacombs deep beneath the theater, where he could live, away from his fellow man who had shunned him his entire life. And so, in 1870, during the Comenard's reign, he built his lair and fashioned secret passages into the opera through which he could indulge himself in trickery. Eric became the opera ghost, for he was truly mad now. His longing for love and acceptance had taken its toll. Now he hated the human beings who walked on the surface. Eric felt justified in extorting money and other luxuries from the managers of the opera, and things progressed without much trouble until the fun until the phantom of the opera fell in love. Eric and Christine Christine Day was a, was a young singer who had come to France with her widow, widower father from Scandinavia. When Eric first noticed her, she had not been at the opera long. He was immediately struck by her simple beauty and pleasant voice. He soon became obsessed with the notion of making her his protege. It was only later that he became obsessed with the notion of making her his bride. Following some initial investigation into the girl's life, Eric had the ammunition with which to condition Christine into believing him, through her father who had died shortly after the couple's arrival in France. Monsieur de Prist promised Christine that he would continue her musical education even after his death by providing an angel as a tutor. Eric became her father's angel of music. Using ventriloquism and the secret passages in the opera, Eric spoke and sang to Christine through a dressing room mirror. Christine, under the phantom hypnotic spell, became convinced that her tutor was indeed this angel of music and resolved to keep it her secret. Things became more complicated. Another young man was interested in Christine Day as well. He was Raoul de Chagny, the younger brother of the Comte de Chagny. Deeply smitten by her, Monsieur de Chagny discovered early on that something was not quite right with Christine. While standing outside her dressing room, he once overheard the phantom telling Christine that she must love him. When eventually the girl emerged from her room, Raoul inspected the unlocked dressing quarters and found it empty. Raoul de Chagny met Christine when they were both children. She and her father visited Paris and the two children met on the beach. Christine's scarf blew out to sea and the boy Raoul retrieved it. Thereafter, they played every day until the elder day and his daughter returned to Scandinavia. Soon after Raoul's suspicions, an event occurred which no one seemed to confirm, but the story goes that Raoul followed Christine to Perogaric in Brittany to visit her father's grave. He surreptitiously stayed in the shadows as the girl took a walk to the cemetery. There, in the dead of night, Raoul saw the so-called Angel of Music appear before Christine. The man was playing a violin, and the music was truly perfect. Raoul could understand now why Christine was so enthralled. After the music lesson, Christine left the cemetery. On his own way out, however, Raoul was attacked by a specter with a death's head. He barely escaped with his life. Shortly after this incident, the Phantom made a demand to the opera managers that Christine Day replace the prima donna, Carlotta, in a production of Faust. 
he threatened to curse the theater if this demand was not met. And there's uh, Christine and the Phantom down here. Unfortunately, for all concerned, the managers decided to refuse the request. Carlotta, suspecting some kind of plot involving her rival, hardened her resolve to appear in the performance, even though she herself received a threatening letter from the opera ghost. During the performance, Carlotta suddenly lost her voice, emitting bizarre toad croaks, and then the curse became re reality. The huge chandelier in the house plummeted, killing sev several persons and injuring many others. Christine Day disappeared for several days after the chandelier tragedy. Her sudden disappearance greatly distressed Raoul, and it was only after he received a note from Christine that he felt slightly relieved. The note asked that he meet her in secret in the masked ball. The two disguised lovers found each other at the ball, and, hiding from a mysterious figure costumed as the Red Death, they proceeded to talk. Christine told Raoul that she must give him up and could not say any, mo any more about it. The forlorn Raoul then hid in Christine's dressing room and with his own eyes saw her disappear into the full-length mirror when the voice beckoned to her. A day or two later, Christine agreed to meet Raoul, but not in a public place. After dark, Raoul and Christine made their way to the roof of the opera house. There Christine told the Vicomte and an extraordinary story. She had been lured by the masked Eric into the depths of the catacombs to his hidden lair. Eric had performed his com compositions for her, including bits of an opera called Don Juan Triumphant. The man professed his love for her and confessed the truth of the Angel of Music Ruse. But in a fortuitous moment, Christine managed to unmask the phantom to reveal the face of indescribable horror. At first, Eric threatened to kill her, but he soon sank into despair and sorrow, and again insisted that his love for her was timeless. Eric's vulnerability actually moved Christine to great pity. At this point, Christine made a deal with the Phantom. If he would let her go, she would return often, and of her own free will. As a token of her sincerity, she accepted a golden ring from Eric, which meant that she belonged only to him. As Eric told this story to Raoul, little did she know that Eric himself was perched upon the statue of Apollo on the roof of the opera, listening to every word. The next night during a performance, Christine vanished on stage in front of a packed house, knowing that the Phantom must have used trickery to abduct her. Ra Raoul frantically rushed backstage to find the entrance to the catacombs. There he came upon an individual known only as the Persian, this man was a member of the secret police and had been keeping track of Eric's movements since his days in Persia. In fact, the Persian helped in the ploy to get Eric out of the country when the Shah decreed that he be killed. The Persian persuaded Raoul to follow him and obey his every instruction, lest they both be killed by the phantom's cunning. Eric had already proven his ability with the Punjab lasso. Oh, oh and there's... Eric as the Red Death at the Masked Ball. Raoul and the Persian made their way into the catacombs and finally to Eric's lair, where they inadvertently found themselves trapped in the torture room. The room was designed such that extreme heat would eventually kill the helpless victims inside, but on the brink of death, the Persian found a secret way out of the room, and the men made their way to a chamber full of gunpowder. The Phantom's attempt became clear. If Christine didn't marry him, he would blow up the opera house. Meanwhile, the Phantom had locked Christine in his bedroom and given her a choice. She could be his bride and stay with him forever, and also spare the lives of the two men, or she could refuse his hand and lose her lover and be responsible for a great tragedy. She chose the former. Then, in an extraordinary act of bravery, compassion, and sheer intuition, Christine managed to persuade the phantom to let them all go free. She did this by kissing him. She kissed him full on the mouth, something no other woman had ever done before. Touched to the depth of his heart, Eric became human once again. He realized that he had been a monster, and he realized that the ultimate assertion of his love for Christine 
would be to let her go free. And so he did. Christine's final parting with Eric was to return the gold ring he had given her. She asked him to wear it always and remember her. Raoul and Christine disappeared together after they were free. Some speculate, speculate that they went to Scandinavia, where they lived happily ever after. The Persian stayed in Paris and died, a, died an old man. As for Eric, the Phantom of the Opera, no one is entirely sure what happened. How he met his death is unknown. It is said that after Christine Day fled with Raoul de Chagny, Eric died of loneliness and solitude in the depths of the catacombs. A skeleton unearthed in 1899 was believed to be that of, of the Phantom. A few artifacts were found which were thought to have belonged to him. These were placed in the Opera House Library for safekeeping, but no one has proven that the op Phantom of the Opera did in fact die. Perhaps his spirit lives on, hoping that one day Christine Day would return to him in another form, in another time. I do not believe the world has heard the last of Eric, the Phantom of the Opera. Mame Geary He seems a lot creepier in the game. For sure. With his weird bone thrown and his uh, sarcophagus and his blood and bone totem. Um, so what do we got here? We got I want to skim through the manual. Manual. Uh, just kind of... Kind of what you'd expect, where it goes over the user interface and whatnot, but... It, hold on. Dramatis Personae. I skimmed through this and it was kind of they put some some goofy stuff in here for some of the people at least um I guess uh, the voice actors is what they are Charles Shinton Mr. Shinton's last role won acclaim in the United Kingdom where he appeared in the title role of The Philanderer at Drury Lane He's most well known for his ongoing BBC television series, Girl Trouble, in which he plays the unfortunate, unlucky Mr. Willie. Mr. Shitton is very pleased to make his debut at the Opera House with the, Phantom of the, uh, with the Return of the Phantom, and sends his profound thanks to the hundreds of adolescent females who write to his fan club daily. Lord Dirk, who's Christine, Miss Dirk is making her professional stage debut with Return of the Phantom. She was the discovery of the opera manager during the massive talent search for these two demanding roles. After auditioning more than 400 hopefuls, the manager settled on his accounts receivable coordinator, who was sitting outside his office during the entire process. Salvatore Vitali. Mr. Vitali game gave up his inheritance in Vitali Pizza Incorporated, a successful chain in New York and its environs, to become an opera star. His last role was playing the unfortunate husband in The Merry Widow. Uh, Mr. Vitali will next be seen at the Paris Theater in Death Takes a Holiday, followed by a production of Don Juan in Hell. Yvonne Chinowith, Mame Geary and is that just short for madam? I guess so. Like over here, we might say like ma'am, which is short for madam. Anyway, Miss Chinoweth comes to the opera house on loan from the National Theatre in London, where she had been on permanent exhibit as the reigning ballet corps leader. She finds playing a dual role challenging, sort of like walking and chewing gum at the same time. When she gets down the walking and the gum, she'll tackle the acting challenge next week. Kevin Boehm was dead Jacques. <laughs> and an animator. 
Uh, Mr. Bohm hails from Ireland, where he's a member of the Dublin International Repertory Actors. And cannot understand why he's... Well, the Dublin IRA. Cannot understand why he's always stopped and searched at airports when he presents his identification card. He says he hates Paris and abhors France in general, and claims that his experience here has been really Eiffel. Awful. Eiffel. Paul LaHaye's Charles, programmer. Mr. LaHaye's was a sumo wrestler before becoming an actor. Being only 5'11 and 160 pounds, one can understand why he made such a drastic career move. Previously small but memorable film roles include Gangster with Broad Lapels in Deadly Weapon 4, Man with Mustache in Police School 8, and CIA agent in JFK 2, The Alien Theory. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Michael Craighead. Oh, this was the creepy guy, Edgar Degas. Mr. Craighead does not know how to paint, cannot draw, and can barely write his name. Yet he is proud to be playing such a famous historical artistic figure. In fact, he's made a career out of playing such roles. His most well-known performance was that of Vincent Van Gogh in the Martin Scorsese remake of A Lust for Life. Mr. Craighead enjoyed working for Mr. Sc Scorsese on the project, even though the slow motion ear cutting scene was a bit revolting. Hey, Chappas. What's up? Just, uh. Just wrap, wrapping up uh, Return of the Phantom. Finished the, uh, finished the game a little bit ago, just going through. Um. Some of the. Some of the stuff that came with the game before calling it a day. So these are just kind of goofy um, descriptions on, I guess they're the voice actors slash programmers, whoever worked on the, on the game. Well, good. Hope you had a good day. I uh, thankfully have the middle of the week off, which is why I always stream on Wednesdays. Robert Kathman, usher painter. Mr. Kathman had spent his whole life as an extra. He's an extra in Return of the Phantom. He's an extra painter on the same production. He'll probably be an extra in the upcoming Dragon Sphere. In school, his teachers told him he was an extrovert, and he spent many days in detention. When he was born, his father said he was just an extra mouth to feed. He's beginning to think he's an extraterrestrial, but he figures that kind of reasoning requires some extraordinary leaps in sanity, so he doesn't buy it. But he's happy as long as he finds that little something extra in his paycheck every other week. You got Eric, Phantom of the Opera. The actor playing Eric has preferred to remain anonymous. In fact, no one knows who he is, not even the staff at the Opera House. He even wore a mask to the auditions. No one knows where he goes after the performances, and he doesn't talk to his fellow actors. The guy is downright rude, if you ask us. Seeing that his paychecks are wired to a numbered bank account in Switzerland, we think he should be investigated by the government. If you run into him on the street, we suggest that you run, not walk away. This guy is really dangerous. During the rehearsals, the assistant director made an unflattering comment about the actor's nose. The assistant director is now on workers' compensation. Mr. Question Mark apologizes in advance for any harm that may come to the audience during the course of the program, and the management assumes absolutely no liability. Raymond Benson, designer, story, and Monsieur Brie. Mr. Benson comes from a long line of circus performers, performers known as the Bumbling Bumpkins, a clown act that has circulated among the American carnivals since the early days of vaudeville. Mr. Benson gave up the act when he finally realized no one in the audience was laughing. What's wrong with these people? Over 50 years and they still don't get it. 
he complains bitterly. He was spotted by the opera house managers performing on the sidewalks of Manhattan's Lower East Side and was hired immediately. There is a you-know-what born every minute, Mr. Benson explains. Let's see, I think there's just the one, the one more page. Well, 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 two and a half. Mr. Grusin's, or, uh, yeah, Matt Grusin, producer. Mr. Grusin's most recent success as a producer was the Paris International Automobile Yacht and Recreational Vehicle Show at the Convention Center last August. Although reviews were mixed, Mr. Grusin was pleased at the turnout. Prior to that, he produced the critically acclaimed Cat and the Dog Show, also at the Convention Center. Before coming to Paris, Mr. Grusin ran the Texas annual Frog and Toad Decathlon in Lano. Working with human actors, and all for the first time, is really an eye-opening experience, Mr. Grusin says. Brian Reynolds, technical director. Mr. Reynolds is a veteran of over 300 theatrical productions, 85 motion pictures, and 36 television, television series. Seeing that he is still under 25 years old, it's no wonder that associates call him a smart aleck. Mr. Reynolds' fa- mother claims that he was sketching logarithms with crayons when he was 18 months old. When he was only seven, he designed a nuclear reactor for his elementary school boiler room, vastly improving the air conditioning system of the building. Ken Nishiue, Mr. Nishiue, first gained his reputation as a high school vandal. When he, is, when he and his friends would go out Friday nights, to paint the town red. Instead of being thrown in jail, the city government proclaimed the young man a genius. When Mr. Nishue was the only vandal who threw in a little blue. Green, orange, yellow, and several other colors. As a result, Mr. Nishue's hometown referred to in Fodor's travel guide as the most colorful little result, resort eh, in Southern California. Uh, I got a bottle of water next to me. Michael Bruce. Bross. Mr. Bross began composing and writing music in the 60s when he was a member of the psychedelic acid rock band, the airport moving sidewalks. When the sidewalks disbanded, he joined the progressive art rock unit, Sour Grapes. When prog rock became out of fashion, he shaved his head pierced his ears, and formed a punk band called the Splinters Under the Nails. His song, Bamboo Water Torture, was the number one hit in the UK. When punk died out, Mr. Bross was hired by several obscure avant-garde filmmakers to compose minimalistic, atonal, and totally unaccessible scores for their art films. It was through this connection that the composer became, came to the attention of the Paris Opera. Believing that disco hasn't entirely died, Mr. Bross continues to perpetuate the works of his idols, the Bee Gees. Frank Fraser, lead artist. Mr. Fraser, often confused with film star Rutger Hauer, is an, 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 is an animator and artist who really wants to direct. Mr. Fraser claims to have such animated personalities as Mickey Mouse, Bugs Bunny, and Daffy Duck. Donald Duck and those topless female centaurs in Fantasia. Was that a thing? Might have to check that out after the stream for research. Uh, but we have not been able to confirm that any of this is true. Even though the Oscars on his desktop are suspiciously lightweight and hollow and silver, he's proud that he has six of them. Ooh, ooh, ah, ooh. Wait, hold on. There we go. Nicholas Rusko Berger, lead painter. Being the youngest member of the Phantom of Return of the Phantom team, Mr. Rusko Berger specializes in manipulating the rest of the staff into thinking he's a cute and he is cute and adorable in order to get his way. Even though the staff thinks he's really an ugly brat, they humor him because he's such a good painter. After growing up in the vineyards of southern France, Mr. Mr. Rusko Berger was a wine taster before deciding to 
apply his artistic talents to canvas. Perhaps this explains why all of his paintings have a strange maroon hue to them. Ken Race, lead animator. Ken Race's last project was animating the elephants for the Paris Opera House production of Hannibal Invades Europe. Animating elephants for a stage production was no easy feat, but apparently it worked, because all the critics could talk about was how much the production smelled. Mr. Race is pleased to be associated with the Phantom production, if only for the opportunity to act as Mr. Question Marks stunt double when the actor is in a particularly belligerent mood. Mike Gibson, painter. Mr. Gibson had wanted to be an Olympic an Olympic gold medal sp <laughs> Ugh, hold on water break Ugh. Mr. Gibson had wanted to be an Olympic gold medalist in swimming but his college career counselor misunderstood him when he said that he wanted to learn the breaststroke instead he ended up in art technique class where he learned the brush stroke today Mr. Gib Gibson has no regrets he enjoys treading acrylics almost as much as he liked chlorine. He does get to be a problem, he states. It does get to be a problem, he states, when the staff, when the stuff gets in his ears and mingles with the wax. Uh, but he developed an ingenious method of, review, of removing the multicolored substance with a Q-tip and creating unique ob objects to art with the outcropping. What, with earwax? Ew. And that was how his highly successful sideline chain of candle shops came about. Ew, earwax candles. And Jennifer Walker, painter. Miss Walker began her painting career in Rome as a, res as a restoration associate for the Sistine Chapel. Although she was hired to merely keep the paperwork of the changes being made, she took it upon herself to actually paint out several panels of the ceiling and recreate them from scratch. Therefore, it's no coincidence that many of the Cupid-like angels in the scene bear a striking resemblance to her son, Ian. From there, Miss Walker moved on to Spain, where she restored Picasso's Guernica after it was marred by a vandal. She even managed to insert a Cubist portrait of Ian into this famous work, deftly hiding it among the arms, legs, and silly screaming heads. It was this attention to detail that led her led to her hiring by the Paris Opera. That reminds me of the, that one painting of Jesus. The lady restored it, and it looked, it looked just, it looked like a monkey with a big old mane. Um, I think we have one or two more here. Barbara Gruber, animator. Miss Gruber is unique in the animation industry in that she really is a cartoon. Citing the great Sylvester the Cat as her mentor, Miss Gruber studied the animation trade at Toontown University in Hollywood. She has worked with such stars as Homer Simpson and Elmer Fudd, and was responsible for getting the Seven Dwarfs back together in their 1989 reunion concert. She hopes to reunite M Mickey and Minnie Mouse for a television special, even though the mice have not spoken to each other in years. Miss Gruber has also been working politically for equal rights for cartoon characters. She's the founder of the NAACC, National Association for the Advancement of Cartoon Characters, and is trying to place a ban on all turpentine and related products. And Dave Ellis, Quality Assurance Team Leader. Why the Paris Opera House employs a critic is not really a mystery. It's his job to tell us if the show's any good or not. Just look at him, though. He sits out there in the house with his feet propped up on the seat and throws tomatoes if it's bad and flowers if it's good. And the stage looked like a pasta dish before the actors finally got it right. Before coming to Paris, Mr. Ellis did a, was a theater critic in Lake Tahoe, Nevada, where his critics, where his reviews for the Chicken Ranch Dinner Theater won a Pulitzer Prize. Well, that's about it. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, that's just regular old... Regular old man manual stuff. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so that... 
that wraps it up for the Return of the Phantom. Aside from the garbage maze that they put in there, I liked it. Pretty pretty solid game, but um, <laughs> yeah, if <laughs> I tried drawing out the map, and just because the uh, the rooms would get mixed up, like you would go you would go south from a room and end up coming out through like the west of another room. Things would just overlap if I tried to draw out the map. Ugh. Wish I would have played the the easier the easier mode because I think that's all that it affects is the maze. But anyway, that's my only only real complaint. Really like the voice acting. Uh, gave my voice a break for a while, except here at the end where I <laughs> read through everything. Um, anyway, so what is it? It's Wednesday. I am planning on starting up Alone in the Dark on um, Saturday. Yeah, I do plan on being here Saturday unless something comes up. So yeah, Alone in the Dark 1. Uh, I've seen it played off you know, corner of my eye. I've seen that played by other streamers, but this will be my first playthrough myself. Uh, just remember it looked super stinky. <laughs> um, I guess it was kind of used as a inspiration to like the, the first Resident Evil game. Something like that. Or games like that that use the tank controls, but not sure who I'll, I'll play as, the guy or the girl. We'll see. We'll see. Pro probably the guy. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But yeah, that's what I'm doing next time. Um, until then, uh, thanks for thanks for hanging with me. And um, I will see you in a couple days. All right. You all have a good day. Bye.